Welcome to the Everything Everywhere Travel Writer Podcast. Join award-winning freelance journalist Joan Mianmetsui. Each week, you'll hear guests from all walks of life share their travel stories, tips, and advice on a variety of travel-related topics. Thanks for spending time with us today, and now it's time to dive into our interview. Welcome to another episode of the Everything Everywhere Travel Writer. Today, I've got a second National Geographic interview that I know you are going to love. My interview today is with Robert D. Ballard, a field geologist, and he's also the author of Into the Deep, the incredible true story from the man who found the Titanic. Yes, the Titanic. So without further ado, please welcome Bob Ballard. I would like to welcome you to the Everything Everywhere Travel Writer. And um, last night I watched the documentary about you. And and I I actually I had tears in my eyes watching everything you've done in your life. And as I was getting my interview questions together, I I thought, where do I begin with this interview? Um you I mean you've had such an incredible career. So tell my listeners about you. I know we'll start from your work as a field geologist, and then we'll also need to talk about the Titanic because I can imagine that everyone wants to know about that. But so the fact that it was a, a cover for top secret mission. No, I, well, I think the best way to start is that um, I'm a kid from Kansas. Right. Uh, first to 13 generations to go to college. Born six months after Pearl Harbor. My dad packs the family up and <laughs> off we go. And I find myself in California. Oh, wow. Uh, and, and he was a test flight engineer with Chuck Yeager during the war. And after the war, uh, we moved to San Diego. And guess what was right out the window? The Pacific Ocean, a yes. third of our planet. Can you imagine being a kid from Kansas and looking at wheat fields and all of a sudden looking at a blue wheat field? Oh, and yes. And also back then, my parents would say, you know, just be home before it's dark. And I would off I'd go because I'm, as you know from the book, I'm dyslexic, so I see the world very differently. Uh, I'm also ADHD, so I have a lot of energy to manage. <laughs> I found that I could just walk it off. And I would go into the outback, and the outback could be into the deserts of California or into the ocean. I, I just went underwater. I, I, so uh, that uh, was really important to me. But also because I was dyslexic, although I didn't know it at the time, I did discover it until fairly recently in life, as you'll see in the book was when my daughter was diagnosed with it. Uh, but I knew I thought differently. I, I am different. I'm always an out of the box person, but I didn't understand myself until I read another book. I'm not supposed to promote other books. But I'm <laughs> with, called uh, The Dyslexic Advantage. In fact, the authors and I have been looking very closely at Locke and Fernetti, Heidi, who wrote a wonderful comment on the Jack in the book. They wrote the book The Dyslexic Advantage. And when I read that book, I cried. Because it explained me to me for the first time in my life. And I now understand why I've been able to do what I'm doing. And, but right. I want to speak, a part of this book is to talk to everybody. But I want to talk particularly to that 20% of the world that are dyslexic to say, hey, this is a cool thing to have. As you know, most don't view it that way. Right. The, uh, the majority of people in our prisons are dyslexic. I don't know if most people know that huge percent because they can't compete in a non-dyslexic world and and they go off in another path that gets them in trouble or they commit suicide, very high suicide rate. So I'm on a mission now. And, and yes. that is to speak to that population and those that tease them and bully them, that wait a minute, these are very talented people. They have a different way of viewing the world that can help the world survive. So I want everyone's coming out. Well, it's time for us 
come back. Right. It's an important part of the book. What? If you were, um, if you were to explain dyslexia, what, how would you describe it to someone who doesn't have dyslexia? We have a different brain. Our right. brains totally are different. So we have to understand that our brains are wired differently. Our neurons are further apart. Uh, autistic kids are very close apart. They're very close together. We're at the other end of the spectrum. And that the way our, our, our brain works, our firing mechanisms, the work's being done at Yale by uh, Dr. Shelley Stalowitz, uh, shows the brain when it, when it drives to code and decode. And we're not efficient mm -hmm. at that. You know, the curse for us was the penny press. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, we were doing just fine. Yes. Uh, but I think what we realized is that we do things visually. So you want to look at career paths that are visual career paths. Architects, lots of dyslexics, artists. Uh, you, there's a long list of accomplished people, but most of the real successful ones, the, the, the majority of self-made millionaires are dyslexic because we operate out of the box. We don't want to run by your rules that's been stacked against us, so we run outside the box, so we're, we're, we're entrepreneurs. Of all, the, um, of all the things that you've done in your life, all of the discoveries and, and your field work, which by the way, you're, if I didn't mention this earlier, you are a field geologist. Um, yep. and, and that covers, the, does that cover everything you've yeah, done? We don't, uh, we don't separate out the earth. The earth right. is a single entity, it's actually a creature. We believe in the concept of Gaia, the earth is a organism. Right. That's, and it's now really upset with us. Yes. And uh, a lesson that we need to know is that it's going to win. Uh, and then we better how to deal with the earth where it's going to send something worse than the pandemic 19, those COVID-19. Uh, mm -hmm. So yes, I, I am a field geologist and I go underwater, I go on land, but only 28% on land. So 72% of it's underwater. And my new mission that I'm on now is to explore the 50% of our country that lies beneath the sea. Most people don't realize that half America is underwater and we have better maps of Mars than our own country. And I head out to sea July 3rd, you can watch it fly, as we mount the second Lewis and Clark expedition. But since 55% of our team are women in positions of authority, we call it the Lewis and Clark expedition. Oh, and wonderful. Mapping our country. And when is that again? When is that and where can they watch? Where can we watch? June 3rd, nautiluslive.org. Go to our website and go to sea with us. And we'll be at sea almost up till Thanksgiving. And then next year, we go to sea for 10 months a year and exploring our country. And the vast majority of it is in the Pacific, where we're headed. So you can follow that. It's NOAA's Ocean Exploration Program. And they've commissioned us, along with Woods Hole and other institutions, to do the mapping of the 50% of our nation that lies under the beneath the sea. We need to know what we own. One of the um, one of the takeaways for me when I watched the documentary was that this is your this is your workplace where other people go to an office or they go into a lab. You go underneath under un, you go down to the bottom of the ocean where it's dark and it and it doesn't bother you. No, I, because of my dyslexic mind, I turn the lights off in my mind. I'm able to be very comfortable down there. I've been going down there for a long, long time. I'm 79. Rumors of my death are greatly exaggerated. And uh, I'm very comfortable down there. A lot of people aren't. I have a very high percentage of dyslexics in my team, particularly engineers. It's called the MIT disease. Uh, so, no, I, I'm real happy with what I'm up to. And um, suffice to say, that you're not claustrophobic at all. You're not no, claustrophobic. Now we don't even have to get into suffering. Dude. That, that goes away. We mm -hmm. send robots. I, I, I'm not going to, it takes me forever to get down to 20,000 <laughs> feet of yes. suffering. Hours each way. No, I send my spirit now. Electronic travel will be a byproduct of what we're going to, you're going to be able to go anywhere you want from your home right. when you get the bandwidth that I have. Will, will you miss doing it the way you've always done it? Will you miss doing doing your no, I'm not discovery work? I love riding horses, but I don't take work. You know, <laughs> I love swimming, but I don't. You know, no, you know. No, I I I, I, I love going to the ocean on vacation. 
Uh -huh. But I'd rather be at home when I'm at work, like you were saying. So we weren't affected by the COVID pandemic because we're, we're not we're moving our bodies around. We're moving our spirits around and they don't catch COVID. Oh, that's fabulous. Now, I don't know whether you answered my um, my earlier question, but what what is one of your most enjoyable discoveries? Most uh, well, what did you enjoy the most? Yeah, it was. I mean, it was definitely the discovery of the, a, a whole new life system on our planet. Uh, in Flop this Rift, you'll notice in the book, my mom says, it's just too bad you found that rusty old ship. I know. No. And, it, and moms are right. And because my seminal discovery was when we discovered a, a new life system in the Galapagos Rift that's totally separate from what we thought was the only one. We were taught photosynthesis was the driving engine, and we discovered that there was a system beneath the sea that lived independent of the sun through chemosynthesis, which means there's life pervasively throughout the universe, we're not alone, and we're, it's driving NASA to explore the moons of Jupiter and and, and, and uh, Saturn, where we believe there, that we know their oceans are bigger than ours, that we suspect we'll find life. It won't be anything like us, uh, and it won't be advanced life within our own solar system, but we can't close the door outside our solar system. I, I believe there's a lot of intelligent life out there, but we're blocked by the laws of physics. We can never get there. There's no plan B for the human race. Yes, at it Earth. Right. One more question. What is your relationship with National Geographic? They're my family. I've okay. been married. Why? I've been married. Television producer, National Geographic. No, I've been working with National Geographic since 1974, and their family. And now they've linked up with Disney. And I wanted to remind you that Walt Disney is dyslexic. And sitting on my desk is this. Hmm. If you can dream it, you can do, do it. it. Walt Disney. And that movie, 20,000 Links, that I've never left this or Nash. And now they are partners. It's a marriage. The dream came, I thought. Would you be able to give us the details about your documentary that's coming up? Basically, again, when I sat down with you, I said, look, we're going to write a book. But I want to have the book in visual format for my dyslexic colleagues. So it's the book visual. Okay. All right. I've got one last question to ask. In the documentary, I noticed there was a clip of you fly fishing. Does yeah. any of your work as a geologist give you an edge in fly fishing? Well, yeah, you just <laughs> have a lot of bobbers in the water. <laughs> I generally have a, I like Mark, uh, some. Tom Sawyer, <laughs> laying on the banks of the Mississippi with bobbers tied to my different toes and seeing what hits. So I always have a lot of bobbers out there. Okay. It has been an absolute pleasure to interview you today. And I, I do wish we could sit for an hour and talk. I know that we'd have a lot to talk about. But at any rate, I wanted to say thank you again and, and best wishes with your future endeavors, what you're working on now. Well, thank you so much. You're and welcome. Thank you helping uh, me spread the word. Yes, all right, wonderful. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Please visit joanmatsuitravelwriter.com where you can subscribe to the show so you'll never miss an episode. While you're there, check out the travel writing courses, membership support platform, and private coaching services to help you learn travel writing. If you found value in the show, we would appreciate a rating on iTunes, and don't forget to tell a friend.